Welcome to Real Estate Investing Unscripted, a podcast from Fund That Flip, where we explore some of the most creative, innovative, and inspiring stories from the real estate investor community. With expert tips and success stories you won't hear anywhere else, you'll come away with inspiration on how to improvise in the unscripted world that is real estate investing so that you can dominate your next real estate deal. Now your host, founder and CEO of Fund That Flip, Matt Rodak. Welcome, everyone, to this episode of Real Estate Investing Unscripted. I'm your host, Matt Rodak, founder and CEO of Fund That Flip. And uh, super excited today about our guest, Evan Holiday. Evan is a real estate developer with LDG Development down in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, Evan's also a fellow podcaster. I had the privilege of being on his podcast, uh, Monumental, very cool show a couple weeks back. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be talking more about that here soon. But uh, first, uh, let's welcome in Evan. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, Matt. Yeah, so so I was doing uh, as I always do, kind of my uh, my internet stalking on you, and obviously we talked before, <laughs> um, but I, I I came across your website and um, I was so, super interested to 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 have you kind of tell us firsthand, um, you know, how you got into real estate investing. I understand you were kind of more on a path to to being a doctor or pre med, uh, and then somehow pivoted into real estate. So would love to get the full story of how that came to be. Yeah, definitely. It's, um, it's crazy how it all happens. I was in college and realized very quickly after about two years of science and chemistry classes that, that there was not for me, but <laughs> I wanted to, you know, figure out how to help people and impact other people's lives, but just not through medicine. And, and so I, I saw this announcement for a huge, you know, $55 million student housing, mixed use retail on the first floor. You know, they even had a, like a historic component on the backside. And I was like, man, that is me like that. This is what I need to be doing. And so I figured out who was the developer for the project. And before they even got it out of the ground, I just was, you know, calling him nonstop. I was like, I, I need to figure out a way to get myself a job, learn from this guy, learn what the heck this whole real estate thing is all about. And, um, so after probably way too many phone calls, uh, finally, so was he like, was he like taking your phone calls or were you just like leaving this guy voicemails? Yeah. Mainly voicemails. Okay. I, I don't think I actually talked to him till he finally said, he's like, all right. He's like, well, you need to prove yourself before we'll just hire you. So that's when he's like, well, you know, bring some people out to the groundbreaking and then we'll talk. And so I ended up rallying some friends and, you know, got them all pizza. And in return, they helped me pass out flyers, you know, to get everybody out to the, yeah. to the groundbreaking. So we ended up getting a few hundred people out there and that's when wow. he's like, Oh, okay. You know, this guy's a real deal. He really wants to work for me. So I ended up getting a job with him and just kind of saw that project from, you know, construction, you know, working with the commercial tenants, helping get them on board, helping, you know, sign over 350 leases, you know, working with the construction team, making sure everything was done right, um, doing the walk, the final walkthroughs and and just like learning development and even management from from up to down. And so that was just a huge, like changing experience for me that that just like opened my eyes to what I really wanted to do, um, which was do, you know, I wanted to do big developments like these that are going to like completely make a difference for, you know, in this case, it was a campus. But, you know, another case would be a community or a neighborhood where, you know, a development can really change the outcome or the or the future of a neighborhood. Um, That's cool. So were you like, were you like still in school while you were working on this project or was it, was it like you had, you were, you were getting ready to graduate and this was your first, first post kind of college job? No, I, I think I was like, I was like 19 when I got hired there. Okay. So you were like, you were so, in school and kind of doing this as like uh as like whatever time you had in between school and classes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I basically just figured out that this is what I wanted to do and just devoted a lot of my free time to, to work in there and figuring out the business and like putting every ounce of energy I had into, to helping out. Um, and that, that in, in itself led to, in our school, we had a program for entrepreneurship. So I, I got involved in that program and through that, 
I, along with a couple other teammates, we all started a real estate development company. And so, you know, it was, it was great because I could take my tangible experience that I'm getting working for this company and then turning it into um, a startup. So we had, we had, we worked with University of Kentucky and their students that were studying architecture were designing these layouts for houseboat. It was basically like a houseboat um, that they would in turn turn into modular housing. So they were taking, there's all these houseboat manufacturing plants in southeastern Kentucky. Um, it's just like the mecca of, <laughs> of houseboat manufacturing. And they lost over 1,100 skilled workers when the housing market crashed. Nobody could buy a houseboat, let alone a house. Yeah. So so they they were looking at ways to put those skilled workers back to work um, and also provide quality, affordable, and energy-efficient housing. So we worked with those students and were able to get the rights to the plans and say, okay, well, let's let's take this and let's take it to scale. Um, so we had built a few of the single family units and then we we're like, okay, well, let's do multifamily. Let's really take this up a notch and do urban multifamily development. So that's when we entered some business plan competitions and actually won a few of them. And we're like, oh, well, you know, maybe we're onto something. We, we kind of were just doing it for more or less a school project at the beginning. And then we're like, you know what, this could really be a business. This could really be something. And so that's when um, I started looking for partners, looking for investors, looking for guys with experience in real estate. Um, and that's when I connected with LDG. So now I've been with LDG for five years now and have been doing uh, sourcing and, and managing new developments for them for the past five years. Dude, that's, a, that's an awesome story. I, I, um, I, I love this particular story because I, I do some mentoring for like different startup founders here in New York and, and elsewhere. And a, a big, I think, part of being successful and for myself personally, I'm sure you've seen it too, is, is finding other mentors and advisors and just getting people enrolled in your vision. And a lot, and a lot of people always come to me and be like, how do I, how do I get like people to help me build what I'm trying to build or do what I'm trying to do or get into what I'm trying to do. And my response always back to them is like, you got to find a way to give first before you can ask. And a lot of times what entrepreneurs say is like, well, I don't really have anything to give, right? Like I'm, 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 I'm new to this industry or I'm new to figuring this out. My response back to them is like, everybody has something to give. And like, this is a great example of you figuring that out, right? You're a college kid who probably had very little to offer this real estate developer, um, but you figured out what he wanted. He wanted people to show up to his groundbreaking and like you made it happen. And that turned into like a full career. So like, that's, that's a super cool story of just like hustling. Right. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. All, that's awesome. Really cool. So, so you ended up with LDG. So what happened to the, the houseboat thing? Did it grow legs or was it just a, a kind of a, a tough time in the market? I would imagine to get something like that off the ground or, or whatever ended up happening. I'm curious. Yeah, so we we ended up building a few of the single family houses, but when we went to go to the multifamily scale, that's when you know I was kind of leading the team and leading the effort, and then I saw this opportunity with LDG to to learn from guys that you know combined their leadership had you know over a hundred years of experience in real estate, and I was like, well, you know what, that that may be a little bit better for my growth and just really like taking my growth to the next level. Uh, as far as real estate and development. So it, it was kind of put on hold. Um, you know, it may make a return at some point. So for everybody listening, it may happen soon, but modular is um, hot right now, man. Like, especially like the, the, the tiny home and modular combination, you might be onto something there. Now might be the time. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, I've been really interested in following a, a lot of the groups, um, like blockable and uh, a few of the other groups out on the West coast that have been really doubling down on that. And they've like, you know, you'd mentioned venture capital and startups that they're getting a lot of venture capital money, which yeah. is interesting. It's starting to creep its way into real estate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So talk to us a little bit about LDJ. What do you guys do? What are you doing down in Nashville? Kind of what are you, what are you working on right now? Yeah. So LDG, uh, based in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, we were founded in 1994 and we were actually just named, our specialty is in workforce and affordable housing. So for families that are earning a living, but yet just can't really afford to make ends meet on, 
you know, the current rents that are just skyrocketing right now. So, so our, our goal and what we strive to do is provide the same quality housing that a family, you know, at market rate levels can afford to pay and afford to enjoy and be able to provide that to families that are working really hard, but just aren't making nearly as much money. Um, so we do all new construction development. Uh, we use, in a lot of our developments, we do tax credits or different kinds of creative financing to get it done. Uh, work a lot with cities and states um, to kind of fill that affordable workforce housing need that they you know, typically always have. Um, so I've been sourcing deals for them for the past five years, and mainly my markets that I've been working in are Nashville and surrounding areas, and then all of Southern Louisiana. So like New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Lake Charles. And we'll come into communities, work with their leadership, work with the mayor's office, work with, you know, community development and find sites for new developments. We typically do 200 plus units and partner with the state and or partner with the city and, and try to figure out a way where, you know, we can partner with them on the financing side as well. And they can either contribute funds or contribute a tax abatement or some other unique financing mechanism that they have uh, to help make that happen. Got it. That's really cool. So it's uh, it's uh, it's um, one part doing good and one part doing uh, doing cool real estate projects, I'm sure. Um, so 200 units is that's some some larger scale projects. I'm sure uh, I'm sure you guys have seen some some crazy stuff um, come up as you know, as you're as you're working through these developments. You know, as the theme of the show is real estate investing unscripted, do you have a good example of like um, something that's happened to you that that you know was outside of the scope of what you could have ever hoped to plan for? And like, what was it? What ended up happening? How does that kind of inform your guys' planning and strategy on a on a go forward basis? Yeah, so definitely, uh, definitely quite a few stories, um, but probably the first one that would come to mind is. So I'd say it was coming up on five years ago, um, right near when I started at LDG, we started working in Nashville and now, you know, now I'm moved to Nashville and really doubling down on the market here. But at the time, this was our first development, you know, it was a new market for us. So we were still trying to learn the ropes of that, uh, city and the local government and how things work in Tennessee. So one of the things that's unique about Tennessee is that, um, for tax credit developments, whenever you're taking on federal tax credits, the state assessor's office has told all of the city county assessor's offices to tax those tax credits as if they're income. So hmm. not only are you, you know, your, your standard, usually your taxes are based on your NOI or your, your market value. And in this case, you're getting that tax, that normal tax. But then you're on top of that, you're also getting taxed on your tax credits. So it's a really unique kind of odd situation where they it seems to kind of get, take the point away from the tax credits. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it's odd that they consider it income, which really it's just a tax write off. Yeah. And it's and it's, you know, the, the point of giving that is so that we agree to keep our rents lower and serve a certain part of the market that isn't typically served. So yeah, it's a, it's really odd kind of a little backward situation, but we didn't, we didn't realize that going into it. And so we had lined up, we had lined all of our funding. Um, you know, we had been working on permits. We had gotten this whole deal lined up, probably spent a few hundred thousand dollars on pre-development. And then our attorneys are like, well, you know, your, uh, your taxes are a little low there in your pro forma. And so that's when we we were educated on this whole double taxation. And we're like, oh, well, you know, that's not going to work. And at this point, we had the mayor's office on board. Uh, we had the housing authority. We had the community development on board. Everybody was wanting to get this project done. But we just kind of hit a roadblock. We're like, well, you know, what can we do? We we can't. We, there's no possible way we can pay double taxes on an affordable deal. And so that's when, uh, with the mayor's help and with actually, they ended up getting state senators and state reps for Nashville, Davidson County Metro and got them at the state level. So the reason, or I guess the, the tool that was created out of all this was Nashville created an affordable housing tax credit pilot program. 
So a pilot is payment in lieu of tax. It's like a, a form of tax abatement or, you know, similar to a TIF, if anybody's heard that. And so we'll pay a portion of the taxes. We just won't pay the full taxes. And, you know, in return, we're developing affordable housing for the community. So but they had this odd thing at the state level where they said any city, county, metro government greater than 500,000 people wasn't allowed to do a pilot. So that the only city, county, metro government that fit that criteria was Nashville. And it was just some odd like one line ordinance at the state legislative level that was put in there like 20 years ago. And so we had to basically go to the state Senate and the state House representatives and get them to remove that line. So that took us a whole it took us almost two years in total to go through the whole legislative process. So that was something that, you know, never would we have imagined that, you know, we see our taxes and we're like, oh, those are you know, those are a bit low. We need to figure out how to address that. You know, we can't pay those higher taxes. And all of a sudden one thing turns into another and we're working with the mayor's office and the state reps and state legislators to get this ordinance completely changed at the state level. Um, so it, it just took this, you know, this whole team effort of everybody working together, everybody realizing there's a need and, you know, kind of like, what you had mentioned before, you know, you're, you're having to sell people on your vision and, you know, get them on board with the vision of the project and how to move that forward. You know, it wouldn't have happened without that because there's no way I could, or our team at LDG could move a piece of state legislation forward and get it passed. You know, it took powers way beyond us to get that done, but that ended up being the first uh, pilot that was ever created in Nashville. That's, that's wild. So I, I got to think like, um, you know, part, part of, part of probably what's, what this is informed, I would imagine you guys, a strategy on a go for basis is like, and I'm sure you had this was like good local representation that like understands the ins and outs of these kinds of tricky tax laws and other legal things. Right. Like, right. Right. Like, yeah. Had, had, had your attorneys not seen that on the pro forma and like, shovels are in the ground. Like that would have been a, a problem I would have imagined. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I mean, it's one of those things where it's glad you catch it beforehand because, you know, even if you, if, even if it delayed us two years, it saved us from, you know, potentially financially disastrous project and, and ended up being, you know, a great project because we were able to get this pilot. And now we're also able to do pilots on a going forward basis. So we created a program for future development. Yeah, that's really cool. The other thing that I love about this, right, is like you got you guys are creating projects that are like generally or, or not generally like they're in the best interest of everybody, right? It's in the best interest of you guys as real estate developers, but also the local communities and state communities, and that's evidenced by the fact that like they're willing to work with you in order for this project to like become a real thing. So I think that's I think that's really cool. We talk about win wins um, a lot, but like it has to be real, right. To get something like this through, it sounds like what you guys had to get it through. Right. And what I would say though, uh, as much as in this situation was so unique for us and, and where you're getting everybody really tied in and tied into the success of the project. But I will say we do deal with a little bit of, you know, this negative light that people put on affordable housing and or this negative connotation that they have with affordable housing, they instantly think ghetto. They think, you know, that's where all the crime is. Mm-hmm. And so that's something that we constantly have to work with. But you're right. Like you said, this was an, op- an opportunity where people are like, well, we see, you know, they're building great communities and we want to rally behind that. And I think they have like 30,000 units of affordable housing that they need in Nashville, Davidson County. So we were just doing 240 of that. Yep. Yep. Nashville's, Nashville's booming. I was down there a couple of months ago. It's crazy to see how many, how many cranes are in the air. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. 
that's cool, man. Thank you for sharing that. And, and, and um, I think the other thing, I'd like to shift us a little bit, you know, part of, I think part of our theme here is, is being able to improvise, right. And kind of learn on the fly and, 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 um, uh, be comfortable with, um, I don't want to say winging it, but thinking creatively on like how to get out of life, what you want. And I think, you, I think you did a pretty cool improvisation again, when I was internet stalking you, um, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about your, your podcast monumental, how that came to be, you know, how you got your first guest on and kind of really how you got that, how, how you got that going. And, and then ultimately like, what are you, what are you trying to accomplish with that? Or what's the theme of your show? Yeah, definitely. So the way Monumental got started is I, I had always been a huge fan of podcasts. And I guess in the back of my mind, I thought I'd wanted to start one eventually. And so it was never really like a, a top goal of mine, or it wasn't like in, in front of my mind all the time until I'd met somebody and he ended up being my first guest, uh, Bob Manasir. And Bob is a venture capitalist from New York. I just met him for five minutes in Louisville. He was here for an event and we just hit it off. And I was like, you know what? Like I need to go, but I really want to keep talking to this guy. And I just thought I was like, well, how can I think of a way what, you know, what, what can be my excuse to reach out to him? And then I remembered about the podcast. So I just kind of went, kind of winged it and just said, you know, <laughs> Hey, I, I have a podcast and I interview guests just like you and I'd love to have you on. And, you know, just kind of a white lie, but you know, we reign with it and he's like, yeah, sure. I'd love to be on, you know, let's circle back in a few weeks and make it happen. And, and so I actually used him. Like once he said, yes, I was like, Oh, I really need to make this happen. <laughs> I guess I need to learn how to podcast now. That's awesome. So yeah, I, I ended up like buying all the equipment, you know, watching all the YouTube videos. And then about a month later did an interview with him and I was, I was very nervous to begin with, but now I, now I love it. And, you know, we've done, I think we're up to 19 episodes and, um, I've really just had a blast with it. Got a lot of great feedback. And the goal really behind monumental is to talk to people, you know, like you, Matt, that are, that are leading a great cause and making massive change in their industry and in the world. Um, and also just to help people, you know, realize their full potential and take that next step into, you know, doing meaningful work and loving what they do. Dude, I love it. Um, I love your story. I love your hustle. I think it, it started early with you in college of just like, this is what I want to do. And like, I'm going to put myself out there and see what happens. And it's worked. It seems like it's worked great for you. Everything from getting into the the industry that you wanted to be into and, and now even stretching into, uh, more than that with, with the podcast. Um, I love it. Right. If you're, if you're listening out there and you're thinking like, man, how do I get started? I think what Evan's saying is like, just do it. Right. Like, I mean, as, as cliche as it sounds like just fig- figure it out. Right. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, like I don't be afraid to call people like they can call me, you know, reach out to whoever you see as a potential mentor or somebody you want to learn from and just reach out to them. I mean, nine times out of 10, they're going to help you as long as you're nice and friendly. And like Matt said, as long as you have something to offer or something to help them with, then they'd be more than happy to return the favor. Awesome, man. Well, this has been great. I appreciate, uh, appreciate your insights into all this. Um, check out Evan's podcast monumental Evan house can, uh, house can people get a hold of you if they've got questions or, um, you know, want to learn more about what you're up to, what's the best way for them to, to find more. Yeah. So I would say, uh, they can email me. It's Evan at Evan holiday.com. That's H O L L A D A Y. Um, or Instagram. I, I get a lot of DMS on there as well and I'll answer those. So, um, yeah. Awesome. Evan holiday.com. Check out his podcast monumental for more inspiration on how to, uh, make big impacts in the world. Um, dude, this was awesome. Thanks so much for spending time with us. Really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I loved it. Awesome. And thank you all out there for listening to this episode of Real Estate Investing Unscripted. For more resources or to get funding for your next project, head on over to fundthatflip.com. Otherwise, look forward to next time. Uh, Your host, Matt Rodak, signing off. Mm -hmm.